Um, so I literally didn't know that this had another chapter, but I went to the game page and it said there's about an hour to two hours of gameplay. And I certainly did not just play an hour's worth of gameplay. And so this is how I found out there is a second chapter, which you kind of have to go to, it kind of takes you to the loading page and then you can click on the icon where the strings are connected. Um, so let's see what's gonna happen because I'm very much into this. So I'm just continuing to play right now. This is really good. Um, you won't have heard me say any of my ending commentary because I found this, but you'll see a weird cut and this is why. I found another chapter, so I'm very excited. Wait, don't take him away. Marie, fun. His hand was yanked from mine and the comforting warmth of his hold was replaced by a lonely chill. I rushed to the guards, desperate to keep him by my side, but they shoved me away and I fell to the rough, cold prison floor. No! The jagged stone's ground scraped against me as I ran to the guards again. But I was too slow, and the cell door clanged shut. I pulled on the iron bars, willing them to open. But like the guards, they held no response to my cries. With no other choice, I watched my love get dragged away. Fun! He yelled something back, but our growing distance muddled his words. As the silhouette faded into the shadows, a piece of me was stolen with him. Ah! Sweat clung to my shirt, air entered my lungs and short bursts. My chest ached with emptiness, the feeling of loss lingered in my body. I had never experienced a dream so real. What was that? As I, slow, as, slowly came, as I slowly came to, my breathing steadied and my heart rate slowed. I fell back against my pillow. Ugh, that was weird. And why did it have to be about him, of all people? I tried to fall asleep to no avail. Memories of the dream tugged at me until morning. Oh? Are, are you my boss now? Why do you look worse than usual today? Great, just what I needed. Waiting by my office door was Vaughn himself, as if he knew exactly that was- As if he knew that was exactly what would worsen my mood. Oh, this music's on. Literally shove it, Vaughn. Wow. More aggravating, too. Impressive. For your for your information, this is your fault. My fault? Yes, because evidently, it's not enough for you to make my life miserable here. You have to haunt me in my sleep, too. You dreamt about me. It was a nightmare. Don't flatter yourself. So if you hate me a little more than usual today, you only have yourself to blame. <laughs> It's not my fault you think about me so much that you dream about me. Just shut up. I'm not in the mood today. Fun only whistled before disappearing into his office, which somehow annoyed me even more than if he had said anything. Ugh, whatever. I entered my own office and started sorting through the mountain of emails awaiting me. But after our conversation, I only felt more hung up about last night's dream. Why am I still thinking about that? Okay, so this is a different, like, this is, like, in a different life. Or, yeah, that they, they're they baited, but <laughs> they're not exactly in good terms, but they know each other. Who is texting me? Hey, what do you want? A proposal we have coming up. Did you make those edits yet? I'll get to it. Chill out. You sure? Your calendar says otherwise. Don't snip around my calendar. How many times have I told you not to do that? I wouldn't do it if you didn't book it up like an idiot. I know how to do my job, Bun. Get off my back. Jesus, you're still crabby from your dream or what? Nightmare. And you're being annoying. I don't need you to micromanage me. I'm not a micro-ma. You know, know what? Never mind. Not even worth it. Just do it. I don't want to have to keep waiting on you. <sighs> my fo phone finally went silent and I took a deep breath to regain my composure. Juan was a coworker I'd known for two years. Since the day we met, our interactions had always played out like this. By some miracle, we were still working together after all this time. In fact, we were often put together on big projects. Our boss said we made a good team. Juan and I both disagreed. There was a big client proposal due at the end of the week, and as much as I hate to admit it, 
We were waiting on me to finish the remaining pieces. But with everything else on my plate, I hadn't gotten a chance to get to it yet. I hate when he's right. Maybe I should ask him to help? No, no, no. He'd never let me live it down. I can do it. I just need to rearrange my schedule. Fun didn't message me for the rest of the day. While I was able to make some progress on the client proposal, it wasn't finished like I hoped. You've got to be kidding me. As if this excruciating day couldn't get any worse, it was now pouring rain. And I didn't bring my umbrella. I can't believe this. Of all the godforsaken things that could happen, this is Talking just- Talking to yourself now? You finally lose it? Uh huh, ha huh, ha. Huh. Thanks for aggravating me. Von was smirking at me with the biggest shit-eating grin on his face. I scowled at his less than appreciated appearance. You have eyes. Do you see my umbrella? I'm sure you can even figure out why I'm mad. Dream me didn't remind you to bring it this morning? <laughs> no. Nightmare you was busy tormenting me. Surprisingly, he didn't respond. Instead, he tilted his head as if contemplating something. What? No scathing remark about how dumb I am for forgetting my umbrella. Too easy. <laughs> then what? Don't tell me you have an extra, extra poncho lying around. Of course not. Jeez, you're unbearable today. The rain isn't supposed to let up at all tonight. Great. Thanks for this amazing news. I really appreciate it. In that case, pray don't get sick and ditch you on that big project coming up. Fun stared at me with some mixture of pity, disgust, and frustration. Don't look at me like- Here, get under. <gasps> we are enemies to lovers who are getting under the same umbrella? Fun held his umbrella out and I blinked, dumbfounded. Surely I heard him wrong. Don't make me repeat myself. <laughs> You're both just so hot-headed. You let me walk with you. Did I stutter? No. Uh... Listen. The only thing dumber than someone who forgot their umbrella before a huge thunderstorm is someone who gave themselves more work to do because they let that idiot get sick. <laughs> that is true. I did not want to get under his umbrella. So bad. But I wanted to walk through the storm without one even less. Without one even less. Fine. Don't make this weird. Right back at you. Oh. He lifted his, um his umbrella over the both of us. There wasn't much room underneath, but it was better than the alternative. I awkwardly shuffled next to him, the closest we had ever been since we'd known each other. He smiled annoyingly. He smelled <laughs> annoyingly good, like warm, earthy pine. Oh, you good? Uh-huh. Well, I guess we'll find out when we start walking, won't we? He made a point to roll his eyes before we ventured into the rain. Water immediately soaked through my sleeve, and I shifted closer to Vaughn. And now you're a blushy boy. He seemed to stiffen, but aside from that, absent as the snarky response I would have expected from him. Huh. He's not bad to be around when he shuts himself up. <laughs> the storm's winds picked up, pelting even heavier raindrops against me. Eek! My side is getting soaked. I glanced at his umbrella. He was holding it straight up, but the wind was blowing the rain at an angle. He needs to hold the umbrella this way to block more of the rain. I think, if you just... What? You, you need to... Why does it feel so awkward to talk to him right now? Is it because he's being weirdly nice? You... What are you saying right now? <laughs> Let me show you. He grabbed his wrist... I grabbed his wrist and angled it against the direction of the wind. Ugh. There. See. Whoa. His grasp in the hand still faltered, and we both fumbled and failed to grip the umbrella tighter. It clattered to the ground, exposing us to the torrent of rain. Idiot. <laughs> Me? You're the one who dropped it. He grabbed the umbrella and then my hand, and we bolted for a nearby awning. Drenched and panting, we caught our breaths as we, as we took a momentary reprieve from the storm. Uh, nice going. How was I supposed to know you have butter fingers? You make it a habit to grab anyone you know? It would have been faster for me to just show you. You weren't holding the umbrella right. He shot me a piercing glare before turning back to the rain. <sighs> Whatever. My place is just one train stop away. If you need to drive there, you can. I live further than one stop, 
Sitting for that long in these so clothes. Yeah, fine. I won't take long. Thanks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you're so like, both of you are so sassy. He held he held the umbrella out. I walked towards it before he pulled away, eyeing me warily. No more sudden moves from you though. Mm, okay. Then hold it right this time. Oh my god. I returned to his side to that faint smell of pine, and together we hurried to Vun's place. Ooh, it's a nice Bathroom's place. on the left. I'll get you a towel. Thank you. You can dry your clothes in the dryer. I have something you can wear in the meantime. Oh my god, you have an in-unit washer dryer? I love that. <laughs> Thanks. In all the time we've known each other, I've never been to his place. He kept it surprisingly clean. I waited awkwardly at the doorway as Vaughn retrieved my towel and spare clothes. Today has been... interesting. Vaughn being nice to me was a development I wouldn't have expected even if hell froze over. And for it to happen after my nightmare last night. All of it was too unbelievably unbelievable to wrap up my head around. I'll just shower and as soon as my clothes are done drying, I'll head out. Here, this should fit. Mm-hmm. Vaughn returned with a fluffy towel, a clean shirt, and some baggy shorts. But let me know if you need anything else. Dryer's in the closet connected to the bathroom, so just throw your stuff in there. Oh, how nice. Um, yeah, okay, thanks. I cringed at my meek response and hurried to the bathroom. It's weird not being mean to him. <laughs> I pulled my clinging wet clothes from my body and turned on the shower. The warm steam was a welcome relief after the cold rain. As I stepped into the shower, I sighed and let my worries melt under the hot water. Inevitably, my thoughts returned to last night's nightmare. I was so heartbroken when Vaughn was taken away. Even now, I could remember the way my chest ached for him, and the way I had grown flustered walking by his side today. Ugh, no, no, no. We are not going to think about that right now. I turned off the water. The heat was obviously getting to my head. As I put his clothes on, the smell of pine surrounded me again. Damn, he's annoying. Why does he have to smell so good? Fresh from my shower, I stepped into Vun's living room, but he was nowhere to be found. Vun? In here. You want anything to drink? In the kitchen. He brought out a beer, a bottle of beer for himself. I'll have... I'm gonna have anything. Let's just have a beer. Woo woo woo. I didn't know you drank. Well, if I'm gonna be stuck with you for the next hour or so. <laughs> and here I thought we were finally starting to tolerate each Think other. Think again. I rolled my eyes, though I hated to admit I felt more comfortable with our usual banter. You hungry? Um, yes. He turned to start dinner, but not without giving me a good glimpse of his smirk first. <laughs> Great timing, stomach. But whatever he was making did smell good. While I wouldn't say it out loud, I was grateful for the food. Eventually, our meal was ready, and he served each of us a plate, including a side of his specialty, a <laughs> shit-eating grin. Uh. Well, eat up. If you're going to be annoying about it, maybe I won't. He rolled his eyes, pushing my plate closer to I me. I was kidding. Lighten up. <laughs> Make sure you eat. If you get sick before the big presentation, I'm going to hunt you down and bring you into the office. Nose running and all. <laughs> I scoffed, but obliged as I dug in. He's actually a pretty good cook. We ate in uncomfortable silence until Vaughn spoke again. Hey, that dream you said you had about me? Nightmare. What was it about? Mm-hmm. What? Why do you care? I don't know. I was just wondering. Uh-huh. So you can torment me over it? No, that's not what I... <laughs> Fuck. Why do you always have to make things so difficult? When have you ever given me reason to make things easy for you? Just answer the question. Damn. <laughs> In my nightmare. What am I supposed to say? It was a nightmare because it was because I lost him? That makes me sound like I'm in love with him. He'd hold that over for me as long as I live. You, er, I, um. It's embarrassing. Why do I have to tell you? Because I asked? <laughs> what kind of reason is that? What's a big deal? Just tell me. I'm mad at you right now. For no reason. Easy for you to say. You can just listen and then make fun of me. I won't make fun of you. Are you sure? Why should I believe you? Because I said so. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, right. 
Why do you want to know so bad? I don't have to explain myself to you. Uh, you do, if you want to know why and what my nightmare was about. I... I... <laughs> He clenched his jaw. When I refused to answer, he scoffed and rolled I'll his eyes. I'll tell you. After you tell me about your nightmare. <sighs> Promise? Mm. His interest was suspicious. Too high to be due to his usual jackassery. I decided to tell him out of pure curiosity. Fine. All right. In my nightmare, I was in some old prison cell, like those musty stone ones from cheesy historical period films. And you were being taken away from me by those guards. From these guards. And I don't know why. I kept trying to stop them, but it was useless. When I woke up, it was like the dream had actually happened. My chest hurt, and I felt like I lost someone important to me. I grew quiet remembering the heartache before realizing Bun was still listening to my story. Uh, I mean, it was a lot scarier than making it sound right now. Like, I got all scraped up from the stone, and there was this loud clanging, and it was cold. Y y you know what? Um, never mind. It sounds stupid when I say it out loud. It was just bothering me all day since the dream felt so real. And it was about you, of all people. So there, you have it. My cheeks burned at having to share such an embarrassingly intimate dream with him, and his silence was not helping. He's probably trying to decide which of his many annoying comebacks to make right now. <sighs> Have you ever heard about the Red String of Fate? Mm. Uh, yes? Say, but I guess I, I have. Have, I have. <laughs> I have. You were a different man in this. <laughs> I guess I have. The idea that soulmates are bound by Red yeah, String, that right? One. Okay, what about it? Nothing. Why did you bring it up then? Nothing? Does it have to do with my nightmare? You think we're soulmates or something? No. <laughs> Look at that blush. As if you would be my soulmate. I mean, I've seen enemies to lovers happen many times. Are you saying you believe in soulmates? Don't be ridiculous. Then why would you bring it up? You're acting weird. Like, weirder than usual. Are you drunk? Ugh, oh, please. Well, you still didn't tell me why you wanted to know about my nightmare. Is it connected to this red string thing, or...? I don't want to tell you. Uh, <laughs> what? I had to tell you about my nightmare. You're going to be an ass about it. No, I won't. Promise? Duh, fine! That dream you had about me... Nightmare. Oh, shut up! <laughs> I saw something similar when you wrestled me today. When did I wrestle you? Earlier? Huh? What do you mean, saw something? What do you mean you saw something? Are you making fun when of When I me? touch someone for the first time, I get these visions. Like, deja vu, but stronger. Uh-huh. It doesn't happen a lot. It's not like I meet people from my past lives often, but it does. And I know it sounds crazy, so don't even bother saying anything right now, or you will piss me off, I swear to God. But that dream you had about me? Mm-hmm. I saw the same thing when you manhandled me earlier. And just like you, I've never experienced anything that strong before. Are you telling me this entire time we've been co-workers and we not accidentally touched, like we've given papers to each other? Hello? I mean, I guess, it's possible. We've been working together for two years. Ah. The vision was so clear, and afterwards I felt... Anyways, I remembered the red thread, and I thought, what if, in another life, we were separated, and two years ago, we finally found each other again? I... I mean, it's stupid. You're, you're right. Just forget I said anything. I didn't say anything. Let me talk. I didn't say it was stupid. So you think we're soulmates? <laughs> I definitely didn't say that. But I do think it's weird we both saw the same thing. Okay, let's just... Hypothetically, if we rolled with this idea for just a second... You're saying in a past life we were... together. But we got separated for some reason. And after all these years, we found each other again. Because we're soulmates tied together by the red string of fate. That's why I had that dream. 
And you had that vision. When you say it like that, it sounds corny. That's how you said it. You know, if you want me to be your soulmate, you are not selling it well. I don't want you to be my soulmate. <laughs> I didn't even believe in them or think about them until now. Never mind. This was dumb. I shouldn't have even brought you up. We're probably just tired from work. And we spent so much goddamn time together. Now we're getting the same weird stress dream. <laughs> are you telling me that we are we're work buddies and we're sharing stress dreams now? Just forget it. Oh, you don't want the same stress dreams as me? I wanted to forget. Oh, he didn't even know how badly I wanted to. But I couldn't. I couldn't. The dreams, this invisible connection to him, it pulled at me. Ah. But now? I have synesthesia. When I hear people's names, I get this physical sensation. Sometimes it's really subtle, like sinking into a pillow after a long day. Other times it's a bit stronger. When you first told me your name, it felt like that short moment after you've held someone's hand. And you can feel, still feel the warmth of their hand on your palm. Or like when someone's hand has been ripped from yours in a prison cell. <laughs> now you're making shit up. I'm not making it up. If you want to be my soulmate so bad, just ask me out like a normal person. You make us very difficult, sir. Yeah, you're the one who brought up the idea of soulmates first. Bun trapped his finger against the table, or tapped his finger against the table. Something he did whenever he was in deep You're thought. being serious right now? About the name thing? Uh-huh. Did I stutter? Damn. This is so fucking weird. When do coincidences become fate? I was starting to feel tired from all these revelations and glanced at my phone. How's it 2.22 AM? Oh my god, I need to get home. I jumped from my seat. Bon glanced wide-eyed at me, and then the You're clock- You're leaving? Well, it's already past two, and we have work tomorrow. You want me to pull an all-nighter with you talking about whether soulmates are real? But you can't go home now. It's dangerous. You're saying you want me to stay the night. I don't want you to stay the night, but it's too late for you to walk home alone. I don't have clothes for tomorrow. Just wear what you wore today. <laughs> the office will be talking, sir. Do you not understand how office gossip works? The same outfit? Who cares? No one will even notice. We're all barely human at work anyways. Fair point. It is late. It's fine. You can sleep on the couch. Wow. No bed for your guest. Nope. I have just the one, and it's for me. <laughs> Unless you want to share. Stop. Hard pass. Just say please. I'll consider it for my soulmate. Oh my gosh, you guys are so unbearable. What is that? In your dreams. More like in yours. Lol. It was a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fun gestured for me to follow him to the living room. I sat down as he walked to his bedroom. He returned shortly with some blankets and pillows. Here. I was buried under a pile of plush throws and cushions. Excuse me. You're excused. <laughs> he dismissively left me, and his bedroom door closed with a reverberating sound of finality. Ugh. He's the worst. So may my ass. How do I turn off the lights, sir? I don't know. Oh. She still hasn't finished the appendix edits I told her about. I searched her calendar. I could already hear her yelling at me for it. And her schedule is packed. Again. Why did she take on so much? It had been a couple of days since the weird soulmate incident, and we hadn't even seen much of each other since. Soulmate. What was I thinking? I must have been drunk out of my mind to have said that out loud. My face heat up from the memory. And now Marie has me blushing. Unbelievable. And yet, as much as I tried to forget that conversation, I noticed myself being even more distracted by her than usual. Has she eaten? She seems stressed. What meaning does she have now? Endless questions and thoughts brought on by my new hyper-awareness of her. And to make matters worse, not only could I get Maria off of my mind, I couldn't talk to her the same as before. Which brought me to my current dilemma. When the hell is she going to finish that appendix? It's due in two days. Fuck it. 
Where is she? All these questions were making me fidgety. There was nothing left to do but seek Marie out and ask her myself. It had been a couple of days since our soulmate talk, but since then, Bon and I had interacted very little with each other. The main reason being all of these small projects I had to manage. A mountain of emails here, piles of documents there, endless meetings somewhere else. I had no time to myself. I'm going to lose my mind. What made it even more stressful was the proposal deadline coming up. I still hadn't made the progress I needed on those documents. Things just keep happening. There's always some fire I need to douse. It was like I could feel Vaughn glaring at my back. Marie. Ugh, here he comes. I got up and opened my office door before hurrying back to my desk. I already know what you're going to say. I'm going to work on it today. Vaughn hesitated before stepping into my office. He closed the door behind him. The deadline is coming up. If you need help. I don't need help. I got it. Relax. Stuff just keeps coming up, so I haven't had time, but I'll do it. Just, I don't need you breathing down my neck. Well, is there anything else I can help out with while you work on the edits, that is? No, no way in hell am I asking you for help. It is healthy to ask for help when you think you, when you need it. You're not asking. I'm offering. Uh. <laughs> Cue the crying from first life us jackass it doesn't even have to be big but however long you were going to spend working on the other crap focus on the proposal instead i'll take care of whatever you would have worked on why so you can hold it over me no thanks so i can stop waiting on you and put my final edits in before the deadline Ugh. fine whatever come here Bun leaned over me, and the new proximity reminded me again of that addicting scent of pine. I pointed him to the different emails I needed to respond to, and make sure to follow up with them on whether those forms got approved. Jeez, normally people hire secretaries for this much work, you know. Now you know why I've been taking a while. He didn't respond, simply pulling up an extra chair and starting. Starting, I turned my attention back to my own stack of documents. Let's see, one of the changes we needed to implement was an Appendix C. I tapped my pin against the table, mentally reviewing the last edits for our presentation. And then there's table A. Just emailed about the new meeting time. Uh-huh. Uh, his help was meant to give me some breathing room, but all I could think about was how much I needed his help on how much I was droning. My vision blurred as hot tears gathered on my lashes. You're stressed out, girl. It's fine. Gotta let it out. Shit. I don't want to cry in front of him. I stared at the ceiling and tried to discreetly blink away the water, but the subtle movement was enough to catch Vaughn's attention. You okay? I couldn't respond. If I did, it would be like breaking a dam. So I covered my eyes, hoping that was enough to hide myself away. I didn't dare peek at him, the expression on his face, as I cried. And he didn't say anything. Only my occasional sniffles broke the silence. I have expected him to throw one of those usual sharp, piercing remarks he loved to jab me with. But he didn't. Marie. Don't. Whatever it is you're going to say, don't. I. It's just so much. And everyone acts like they're only giving me one small thing, but piles up and piles up. By the time I realize how much work there is, it's too late, and I don't know how to break it down to share, and I. Ugh. My voice cracked and I swallowed the rest of my sentence. I didn't trust myself to continue without completely breaking down. Fun seemed hesitant before Fun seemed to hesitate before reaching my for my hand awkwardly. He held my hand in his, rubbing small circles along my knuckles. It was strangely comforting. My snuffles started to fade. Sometimes I just wish I could leave it all behind. Drop off completely drop completely off the map and run away <laughs> to where the seaside oh, i love a seaside yes actually i've always wanted to go really crazy guess <laughs> well if you ever take the leap take me with you you would come <laughs> beats this place <laughs> maybe then i'd pursue my dream of being an artist uh, you want to be an artist when i was younger it was all i could think about 
Oh, this is fun when he's not an artist. We but, met at work. You know, parents don't approve. You go to college. You get a soul-sucking job like this. It's never too late. <laughs> sure. Uh, but then who will do all your work for you when you're having a good cry? Ah, uh, you guys are so cute. <laughs> this is the first time that's happened. Impressively, it is. Stop. He laughed and a few strands of his hair fell into his face. He actually looked cute. Did I really just think that about Bun of all people? Absolutely you did. My mind drifted back to our recent conversation. Say, do you still think we're soulmates? I don't know. Is it hard to believe? It is hard to believe. And you don't seem like the romantic type. Is that any way to talk to someone helping you? <laughs> I'm being serious here. I'm just stating facts. Do you think we are? You didn't even answer. You go first. I'm still thinking. Why? Are you going to steal my answer? Oh, please. When have I ever done that? That's true. If there's one thing you can do, it's think for yourself. Wow, that a compliment? Probably. Don't let it get to your head. Too late. <laughs> I shook my head, trying to hide the smile on my lips. Anyways, I... Uh, we're hella soulmates. There's no question about this. I don't care. I'm playing We Are Soulmates card. But whether we are or aren't, I don't think that matters. Oh, so I do believe we're soulmates. Why? I chose the right one, right? Because being in love, falling in love, is about the experience. You know, learning about each other, finding new things to fall in love with, supporting someone no matter what, and them doing the same for you. A relationship that's just pure and unselfish. I think soulmates are just a way to confirm that the person you're with will do that. So I guess, even if you are my soulmate, you have to prove it. He laughed again and my heart fluttered. Has his laugh always sounded like that? Probably. I don't know if I believe in soulmates, but... Mm -hmm. If they existed, I think the universe would send signs. Signs like the ones they already sent to us. So maybe we're soulmates. Maybe we're not. I don't know, but... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Deep in contemplation, those rings are killed. I do know that since the day we touched, I can't stop thinking about you. Are you kidding me? Again, you guys did not touch for two years. Like, no accidental touch. Nothing. You didn't give someone a key. Anything for the off- nothing. Oh my god. At first I was just curious, and are you my soulmate, are you not? But it didn't take long for that to change. Soon you were always on my mind. Are you in your office? How are you doing? <sighs> Fuck, this is embarrassing. No, it's cute. We're being vulnerable. He wasn't the only one that felt that way. The back of my neck, the tips of my ears felt hot. You've been thinking about me, and not in a bad way? As much as I want to deny it, yes. <sighs> Normally, I would have retorted with something sharp, but as much as I wanted to deny it, his confession flustered me, in a good way. What happened? Just a couple of days ago, we were at each other's throats. So then, what good things have you been thinking about me? Ugh, shut up. <laughs> I give you a whole speech and you still want more? Mm -hmm. You always greedy with the people you like? What? I didn't say I liked you. Sure. I'm laying my heart out, holding your hand, and you haven't moved a muscle. <laughs> what is that then? You guys are so cute. It hurts. <laughs> so, it's hurting me. It's, they're so cute. Maybe I'm just not mean, like you, to people when they're vulnerable. <laughs> like I'll believe that after working with you for this long. I'm not mean. <laughs> sure. Uh-huh. He smirked absentmindedly, bringing the top of my hand to rest against his cheek. To think this all be this all happened because of a thunderstorm. Oh. 
Fun. If we were together in a past life, do you think this is our first time meeting since then? I wouldn't know. If we have met, I don't remember. Holding my hand isn't jarring any memories? What? No, I, I don't know. Th that's not how my thing works. <laughs> We're curious people. Is that not how your thing works? What else do you want to try? I lean closer to him, and the unfamiliar pink hue on his cheeks deepen. I... Um... Do you want to try, is what I said? Okay. What? No scathing remarks? No witty retorts? No snide comments? <laughs> Shut up! Oh, a classic. By now, my lips were only a breath from his. Each inhale Von took brought us tor torturously closer together. Uh, I mean, I feel we could do either way. But, uh, I guess since we initiated it. <laughs> I pause, appreciating this new side of Von's frustration, before hearing him mumble. Kiss me already! <laughs> what was that? Ask nicely. What? No way! You don't want to ask nicely? Shh. You don't want us to get caught, do you? Now, ask nicely. His breath hitched and he parted his lips. Kiss me, please. Ugh. No way. There's no way I can... All right, all right. Enough with the complaining. Oh, my breath... My, my mouth brushed against his. He stiffened for a moment before hungrily enveloping me in a kiss of his own. We parted for a second, each of us using the opportunity to cra catch our breath, and he murmured. Holy shit. <laughs> you suck at kissing. <laughs> what? Then don't kiss me. He cut my words off with his lips on mine and placed his hands at the base of my neck, pulling me even closer to him. For someone who says I suck, he sure can't seem to stop kissing me. I pulled away from him, ready to retort. Don't. He easily shut me with another kiss. Shut me up with another kiss before leaning back. You're going to say something annoying, right? You always make that face before you do. <laughs> so you know that about her. Oh, I'm crying. <laughs> they're so cute. <laughs> A lot of this is just going to be like, oh, they're so cute. He flashed me the same smirk he always wore when he wanted to make my life harder. But this time, I didn't find myself as annoyed by it. Fun stared at me for a longer moment, for a moment longer before returning his attention to my computer. Well, hate to cut the party short, but if you don't finish your changes by the end of the day, it's my ass on the line too. Mm -hmm. So, chop chop. <laughs> Fine. Don't sound so disappointed. If you do well, I'll reward you later. <laughs> he leaned towards me, planting a quick peck on my cheek before pulling away. The shit-eating grin was back, and I pushed him. Sh shut up! Do you normally reward your co-workers like that? Have to say, this is a first. <laughs> I tried to ignore the rising heat on my cheeks and returned to my work. As promised, as I promised, by the end of the day, I had finished making all the changes, but admittedly, I had been distracted by Von the entire time, something I never would have thought possible before today. Soulmates, huh? An invisible red thread connects those who are destined to meet. Regardless of time, place, or circumstance, the thread may stretch or tangle, but will never break. Chinese proverb. Um, this reminds me of Heartstrings, which I played on my channel, which also deals with the theme of red strings of fate, and at the, in the game, they include the second part of this line, the thread may stretch or tangle, but will never break. So that's great to know that that comes from a Chinese proverb. Guys, this is so good. I'm gonna just continue because honestly, yeah, I'm gonna follow the red string. <laughs> give me the red string. <laughs> give me, give me, give me, give me more. Okay, so this is our third life. Um, let's see what happens here. Ever since we ran into each other, I hadn't, haven't been able to stop thinking about you, so... 
Will you go out with me, Marie? Oh my gosh, how forward. Fun. I'm sorry. I like you. I really do. But I'm not looking for a relationship right now. There was a tug in my chest as Vaughn's face fell. I just think I need to focus on myself. Right person, wrong time and all that, you know? My lips quivered into a weak smile. Yeah, I get it. Maybe when the time is right. Until then, try not to forget about me. I could never. What happened? Huh? What? As I blinked, sunlight flooded my vision. We're in a forest. Oh, okay, that's a dream. A dream? Why am I thinking about that now? That happened years ago. Oh, so it's been years. Prime, we're ready to make it happen. Clear water rushed over gleaming rocks as I groggily sipped on my drink, trying to shake off memories stretched up from that dream. It had been years since I first saw images of this place, and since then, I had saved all my money to settle down here. I finally made it. It was an incredible feeling to finally see my dream come true. In fact, my entire life felt like a dream. In work, I had achieved I had achieved the success I'd always dreamed of. In my friendships, my circle was close and my relationships deep. And years of self-love had taught me how to give myself the happiness and freedom I have always wanted. When it came to love, I had never felt any shortage. And yet, Sometimes, in moments like this, I thought of that man from all those years ago. What it would be what it be like to share these experiences with him. I wondered if he ever thought about me, if he ever found someone else. I didn't regret my decision. Everything I'd done, ever done, led me to this moment. And yet, what would have happened if I had said yes? Ugh, oh, that's a big what if right there. Mm-mm mm-mm mm-mm. If I had three lives, I'd marry you in two. The other? Perhaps that life over there at Starbucks, sitting alone, writing, a memoir, maybe a novel or this poem, friends to laugh with, and a man sometimes, for a weekend, to remember what skin feels like when it's alive. I'd walk the beach at sunset, find perfect shell spirals and study pockmarks water makes in the sand. And I'd wonder sometimes, if I'd ever find you. Sarah Russell. All of these like quotes and stuff, these poems are making me cry. <laughs> this is such a well thought out story. I love it. I mean, I guess. Oh, so that was a very short one. So we don't ever find each other in that life. But there's one more. I think. Question mark. Yes, there is one more. Um, so that was a very short life, a third life, where we don't see Vaughn at all. We only meet very early on, but then we focus on ourselves. That's really beautiful. Um, I do like to see that these are kind of just like different alternate universes that we're seeing. And either we're reliving because we're, we're living the same life so it's not like but these are potential opportunities for how they could have been realized um with keeping with some of the same elements but anyways let's get back and i think the fourth life is the last life we'll get for this visual novel so let's see what the fourth brings A red line stood out against a black and white canvas, connecting two figures being ripped away from one another. It was a famous piece, created hundreds of years ago. Evidently, the artist was a well-known photographer before he painted this, but this became the piece he was known for. Okay, so we're in the future. So maybe this is, this is definitely alternate, um, like alternate universe, but like changing the settings. So it's not like the same factors or parameters that we got like with the first three. Like for example, how in the first life we work, but we meet Vaughn, who's the photographer, photographer slash the artist. Second life, we're working together, but he said he would have pursued art, but then he didn't. And we met at work. And the third life, I'm assuming is maybe we did meet at work and we were on better terms and he wanted to go out with us, but 
then we said no. And we didn't spend our lives. Or, like, we didn't know each other, really, in that life. So this life seems a lot more distant and far away. So I wonder if this will just be, like, how many times have we met each other, but we don't know that we've met each other. And it was the only painting he ever created. A delicate red string floated before her. A singular thought blanketed any reason she had in that moment. Don't go. This is my first time seeing the painting in person, but it feels so familiar. I can see why it's famous. What a coincidence. Huh? Besides me, beside me, a handsome stranger admired the same painting. When I come here, I'm usually alone. Handsome stranger, hello. Won't compa complain about a little company, though. You must be a big fan if you come here that often. It's a favorite. What do you think of it? I like it. For some reason, I feel connected to the piece. The red string in particular is my favorite. It makes me feel hopeful in a way. Over the loss and desperation, it was a feeling of hope that I held on to. I know what you mean. If you like this one, there are similar pieces in the museum. But if I'm being honest, this one will always be my favorite. Personal bias. Huh. Well, I'd love to see your recommendations, especially if you come here often. It would be my pleasure. By the way, got a name I can call you. He extended his hand to me. Marie, and yours? I took his hand and shook it. We both are going to feel the sensations <laughs> this about the same time. He's going to be like, wow, the jolt. Wow, the name caught. The also joke from the car. Oh, you guys are so cute. One. There you go. You're both fine. Where are you taking me? Fun guided me forward, his hands gently resting on my shoulders. He chuckled near my ear. The sensation, sensation sent shivers down my spine. <laughs> you want me to ruin the surprise? I mean, no. We've been together all these years, and you're still planning surprises like this. Oh, you have a memory. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. It's so good. What could it be? The sound of, a, of water running, a clean, damp smell that lingered in the air, the slight give of the dirt, as if it had just rained. Where were we? Are we at the riverside? This one's different. I've wanted to do this for a while. A while? What are you? We're at the riverside that we said we wanted to go to. <gasps> I gasped at the scene before me. Crystal water lapped all over smooth, glistening rocks, gold and amber leaves decorating the space. I know we said this vacation was because you were stressed, but... Didn't you wonder why I was so adamant about here? <laughs> he gave my shoulders one light squeeze before joining my side. His eyes shone with excitement. Well, a little bit, considering you're usually so laid back. I've always wanted to take you here, to see this place. Is it from the first life? This was just the perfect opportunity. <laughs> or like our first life in this visual novel. Here, really, why? Just been a dream of mine. You like it? I do, but I'd never talked about seeing the Riverside. In fact, I wasn't sure I'd ever even thought about visiting one. But it was breathtaking. Okay, so it's not from our first life, but it's from a previous life. In between. I felt a sense of belonging, like I was meant to be here. How did you know I'd like this? Hmm, call it a gut feeling. Uh-huh. Here, sit. <laughs> he laid out a blanket and we both settled next to each other, on the padded ground. Well, if there's anything I've learned from us dating, you always know me better than I know myself. I wouldn't be surprised if you knew me in another life. He flashed me a mischievous smile before taking in the view himself. We both enjoyed, quietly enjoyed the scene. When I peeked at him again, his eyes had taken on a distant expression. Marie. Yes? What if I told you... I did? You what? Did what? That I did know you in another life? <laughs> as romantic as that is No, I It's not to be romantic I mean 
He averted his gaze with a rare look of uncertainty. So this was a different life in between the first one we saw in this game and the last one we are currently in, in the museum and stuff. Fun. I'm about to tell you something, but don't think I'm weird. Fun. You know you can trust me with anything. What is it? You know how I get those visions when I first touch someone? Yeah, like deja vu. Remember the feeling I got when we met? You said I felt like an old friend. Like someone you had known your entire life. Yeah, and you did. But it also felt like more than that. I never told you how intense it was. But when we touched, I never felt anything like it. It was like this rush of emotions, of falling in love, being in love, heartbreak, grief. Oh, I love that. Oh my god, I'm crying. I think I'm crying. Oh it was god. like experiencing a past life together. Wow. No, not like. It. I, I think I actually did. Really? Our past life. If it was anyone else, I would brush them off. I'd call them crazy then and there. After all, what Bun was saying was ridiculous. But, because he always listened to me, supported me, protected me, cherished me, showed me how to pursue, how, showed me how pure and unselfish love can be. I think I'm actually crying. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the tears are real, guys. Um showed me how pure and unselfish love can be because it was him I wanted to believe him you saw our past life together what was it like you believe me because it's you <laughs> he let up with relief before engulfing me in his embrace whoa easy there <laughs> you don't know how long I've been holding that in Ugh. Thought I was going to carry that to the grave. You're such a cutie. You're so dramatic. So, tell me more about this past life. He chuckled into my shoulder before stepping away. Which one? There's been so many. I have options? Yep. There was the first time we met, after centuries apart. In a couple lives, we hated each other before getting together. <laughs> No way. You can be mean when you want to be. I mean, I bet you deserved it. You've also rejected me. I have. <laughs> it's not a big deal. I'm over it. You felt all of that in your vision? Like, babe, your vision was very detailed. Wow. I'm over it. <laughs> so then, we've actually shared a lot of past lives together. It's like we're soulmates. I stared at the scene before us, lost in my thoughts. It sounded cheesy when I said it out loud. And yet... Being here with Vaughn, watching the flowing river, it felt right. That's what I thought when we met. Hmm. I have a theory, actually. Yeah? What is it? I have no way of proving it, but I like to think that the more lives we spend together, the more I remember next time we meet. I'm crying. <laughs> Ever the, rom the romantic, I see. I've had a long time to think about this. How many years have we been together? I lost track at this point. Well, I've had that long to theorize. And now you're going to dump it all on me? <laughs> exactly. I never would have imagined you'd believe me. But you do. That's how I know we're soulmates. Cheesy. You said you like cheesy pickup lines. When? A long time ago. You wouldn't remember. Oh, stop. That was in my past <laughs> life. I shook my head, surprised at how naturally this conversation of past lives was going. to save because these are lots of questions I have lots of things to ask can I ask them all or do you only get one have you ever looked for me do you think 
you've ever forced me to be with you? Do you ever get tired of it? Those are all of my questions. Guess the first one. Do you think you've ever looked for me? If you ever happened to know I was your soulmate or something. I've thought about that question too. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if I have. I'm sure even if we couldn't be together, I'd wonder how you were doing, how that life was treating you, things like that. Hmm. Let's just go in order. Do you think if you knew we were soulmates, but we weren't together, you would force me to be with you? Well, there's a dark thought. Hypothetically, unless you already know from your glimpses into our past lives. <laughs> Afraid I'm not that all-seeing. Maybe that's good. You won't remember all the times I've brutally embarrassed myself in my other lives. <laughs> Think I've seen enough of your embarrassing moments in this lifetime. Stop. Hey. Kidding. But let's see. Hmm, would I force you to be with me? I mean, I don't think you would, just given that, like... I mean, from the third life we saw, you didn't force me to, you know, force her to be with you. I can't remember a time I did, and I'd like to think I never have. But who knows? Love can be dangerous. Do you ever get tired of it all? Tired of you? Tired of all of it. Of meeting me for the millionth time, or of falling in love with me, being with me, losing me. You make it exciting. Boy, I'm crying right now. <laughs> um, okay, uh, this is also reminding me of um, that webcomic on Webtoon called See You in My 19th Life, where the woman basically keeps like has a bunch of life like you know it's just like in this story you're reincarnated but generally speaking people do not remember when they're reincarnated into a new life but this woman does and so she meets someone who i don't know if they've said that they're technically soulmates but like someone she wants to be with and she cares about in her 18th life something happens and she has to meet him in her 19th life and she's pursuing him in her 19th life and it's very cute and i need to catch up with that uh but this is what this is reminding me of a little bit but i also just cried right now i feel like i need to cry because do you ever get tired of it all <sighs> And he just says that you make everything exciting. How fun. My chest felt warm. I didn't know if Un's words were true, and maybe I never would. But a love that transcended time. Someone who would choose me over and over. The idea of it would make even the most hardened, skeptic, a uh, hopeless romantic. And even now, you would still choose me. Always. You aren't bored of me? Never. So, even in our next life? By your touch, I'll always be yours. <laughs> Crying. And if to, as if to demonstrate his point, Fun traced his fingers over my cheeks. His gaze drifted over my features with the same unwavering devotion he has always reserved just for me. Time seemed to slow as I etched this moment into my memory. Twilight gray of his eyes, his gentle, cal callous touch, that earthy, comforting smell of pine. I didn't want to forget any of it. We leaned towards each other, pulled by the invisible string that would forever tether us together. I mean, we can do either, but... Our lips met in an intoxicating kiss. One that somehow felt both familiar and exciting. His voice was a quiet murmur, with a tenderness I would never get tired of. I love you. I'm crying. <laughs> I would choose you in every lifetime. JB. Intertwine is officially over and I'm crying. Would you choose me in every lifetime? Oh, we're at the end. Thank you for playing. Wow, this was beautiful. 
Okay, thoughts? Um, I love that this game gave us, like, um, wait, it doesn't give us deja vu. Oh, because you can play it. Ah, that's nice. I like that this visual novel takes the red string of fate aspect, the theme, and shows us exactly what's happening over multiple lifetimes. Traditionally speaking, and what I've seen mostly so far, I've only really seen like stuff where it's like, we've met in this past life and now we're together and that's fine. Like that's like a one, two, like life, you know, past and current. But we kind of get to see these two characters meet each other over and over and over again. Um, and I love that. And I think it's really beautiful the way that the theme has been done. And it's such a lovely visual novel, and it's perfect. Uh, the voice acting was wonderful. Also, gave me chills. Uh, and the dialogue, the writing, is also just very, like, made me feel... I was very much immersed and attentive to this um, story and plot. Um, so thank you so much to the creator and all the people involved in this uh, making of this visual novel, because it is beautiful. Um, Please check it out for yourself if you want to, you know, make your own choices and have a fun little experience. Um, living these multiple lives with fun. Bun is such a, like, fun, thoughtful character and I really like seeing all the sides that he had, but also for the main character, all the sides that they have. Um, it's just a really beautifully done visual novel. Um, Please do, yeah, check it out for yourself. Make different decisions that I did. It's very cute. I love it. I'm glad that I could play it. Um, yeah, I don't even know. I feel like there's definitely, like, especially with the last, for the last life, I was definitely on, like, crying a bit. There were some tears for real. You could not see me because I'm not on screen, but I am crying a little bit because uh, it's so sweet and heartwarming. Um, so. Yeah, thank you so much for watching me play Entertwine. It was a wonderful experience. I'm definitely going to play through again and see some of the slight different choices that I can make because I want to see, um, I have two more um, pictures of mine. I don't know if these pictures will ever land in your hands, but in the hopes that you never forget me. To my love that transcends time. Oh, that's so cute. I love that. I need to find these other two. Um, but okay. All right, I'm gonna get going. Have a good rest of your day, and I will see you next time with another video. Bye.